it's not illegal to be gay in Egypt, but it is still highly stigmatized. And according to an undercover investigation by the BBC, Egyptian police officers are using dating apps to track down and arrest LGBT people. Transcripts submitted in arrest reports show that police officers are posing online trying to entrap people and then pressure them to meet up for dates. Well, to talk more about that, we're joined by Peter Tatchell, the veteran LGBT rights campaigner. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. To join you. Now, in your many years of campaigning, um, and you have campaigned all over the world, uh, have you ever come across something like this where police officers, law enforcement officials are basically trying to hunt down people because of their sexuality? Well, this has been happening in Egypt for many, many years. And probably hundreds of gay and bisexual men have been caught using this system of entrapment where Egyptian police pose as gay, go online, lure men to agree to rendezvous, and then arrest them. It's also very interesting that sometimes men on these dating apps are just simply looking for friendship and companionship. They're not looking for sex. But the Egyptian police pressure them into saying that they want sex and then use that as evidence to arrest them. They've also evidenced that the police have actually doctored texts and photographs to make them compromising in order to justify prosecution and to secure jail time. Now, this tactic has been used by other countries as well. Um, it is a, a favoured tactic of many homophobic tyrannies as a way of getting at the LGBT plus community, terrorizing them, and of course, jailing as many possi as possible. Now, it, it's not actually illegal to be gay in Egypt, as I said in the introduction, unlike, of course, many countries um, in the Middle East. There is, however, uh, a law against so-called debauchery, and, and that is what they're using to entrap people, isn't it? That's correct. Um, they use this generic uh, catch-all um, clause of debauchery as a way of prosecuting gay and bisexual men, and sometimes lesbian and bi women as well, but much less so. I mean, you go back to the raid on the Queen boat many years ago, where I think 52 gay Egyptians were arrested in one foul swoop. Um, they were all charged with debauchery, and many of them end up serving uh, many years in prison. So it is nothing new, but it is based on an interpretation of law rather than an actual law that explicitly forbids homosexuality. Mm. Now, one British MP uh, did call on Egypt to, to refrain from this practice, to do more to protect LGBT people. Would you like Western countries to do more? Well, of course, um, Britain is complicit with the Egyptian police because we train them. We train Egyptian police officers in this country. We give them training. So we are complicit with a police service that per persecutes and oppresses But the British LGBT police, people. I should say, the British police are not training the Egyptian police to track down gay people. No, but they are giving them training in all kinds of sophisticated techniques, including uh, online tech, which can then be used or misused and abused to track uh, LGBT plus people. And also, of course, Britain provides aid and other trade with Egypt. And you've got to ask yourself, if we really stood for an ethical foreign policy, why would we have any kind of deals with, with what is a dictatorship? I mean, there is no freedom of expression or right to protest in Egypt. It is a basically a police state. And it's not just LGBT plus people who are victimized. It's also women. It's um, political oppositionists and Democrat reformers. It's also those who represent um, oppressed minorities, ethnic minorities and tribal peoples within Egypt. Mm. So this is a much bigger, wider issue. And I think that Britain really needs to give a lead by stop colluding with this, stop colluding with this regime full stop and using our influence at the United Nations mm. to pressure Egypt to change. Do, do you think that sadly these police practices and, and these laws are, are just a reflection of attitudes in the Middle East, which does have traditional patriarchal societies? Uh, do you see any sign of attitudes changing here? Well, of course, up until about 20 years ago, Egypt has a relatively liberal attitude, a hands-off attitude towards the LGBT plus community. There was no systemic um, organised persecution. 
There were sometimes occasional arrests and prosecutions, but it was quite rare. It's only in recent years, relatively recent years or decades, that this persecution has intensified to this extreme level. You know, you, you go to Egypt, and if you're a man, and if you're good-looking, you will get propositioned by Egyptian men all the time. But some of these Egyptian men who do the propositioning are undercover police officers. So I had some friends who went to Egypt uh, on a holiday. Um, they were gay. Um, they were open to having a relationship with a, a local person. But they were too terrified because they'd heard how Westerners had been lured by police into um, admitting their sexuality and engaging in same-sex acts and then ending up in prison. But for foreigners, the more likely punishment is arrest, small jail time, and then deportation. For Egyptians, it's often three to five years behind bars. And as you probably know, um, a person who displayed a rainbow flag at a pop concert some time, I think it was last year or the year before, they end up in prison for simply displaying a rainbow flag. Mm. I mean, I, I know that you were in Qatar also protesting about this issue. Um, do, you, do you see any comparisons with Egypt and Qatar? Well, of course, the Qatar police use the same uh, techniques. They also um, lure gay men on gay dating sites uh, to rendezvous and then arrest them. So this is, this is pretty scary. And I, I've spoken to Qataris who said that they would love to go on a gay dating site, even just to meet other gay people and just be friends. But they're too terrified because the Qatari police will then lure them into making some kind of incriminating statement and use that to either prosecute and jail them or more likely mm -hmm. to force them to undergo so-called conversion therapy. Oh. Qatar has secret gay conversion centers where one victim told me he was psychologically, emotionally and religiously brainwashed into stop being gay. Peter. He was so traumatized, he committed suicide. That's t a terrible story. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. We very much appreciate your insight and your expertise there. Peter Tatchell there.